I wish I had my wishes. I wish for righteous visions. I wish for hundred gallon tanks full of tropical fishes. What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG. We got a deck for you today. Something I just feel like I haven't done enough of lately. We're doing lists and spoilers and all kinds of stuff, rapping and whatnot. So I just feel like I haven't done enough of the traditional deck tech. This is what we're known for. So let's do one of these. This is Grixis White Dragons. <laughs> you hear a lot about Jeskai Black. It's the same color combination, but we're way more towards Grixis than we are Jeskai, you know, in the three color department. We just kind of slide in white and a couple of cards and see how it does. We get to play a lot of powerful options, and there's a couple of different ways to play Grixis in the format. There's just straight up Grixis control available to us right now, but I think going the Dragons route gives us the most threats and in some ways the most versatility. We can have dragons that do stuff when we swing in with dragons. I kind of like having that option. And a lot of the dragons at the top end of the curve are really freaking good. So yes, there are good planeswalkers in Grixis, but rather focus on the dragons. As usual, I'm going to take you to the creatures first, and I'm going to showcase the dragons first. They're the most important thing. We are playing a couple of other creatures, mostly dragons. We're going to play four copies of Thunderbreak Regent in the four slot here. I think that this is the thing that makes this a mid-range deck and not necessarily a control deck. Like, there's a few ways to build Grixis, and there's a few ways to build Grixis Dragons. You could also go the just super hella control route and play like a bunch of Sylvangar Scorn and other, you know, counter e, counter spell e cards, you know. We're just sort of a mid-range deck, plays lots of threats and lots of removal. Thunderbreak Region is a great four drop. It just really outclasses a lot of other four drops in the format. We can fly over pretty much everything and eat anything else that flies. They try to remove it, it's going to cost them, or any of our other dragons. As long as this is out, it's going to cost them to even target our stuff. So Thunderbreak Regent just an amazing four drop with incredible stats that is relevant when they try to remove it. That's a fantastic card. Let's play that. Two copies of Ojutai in the deck. This is one of the white cards that we're playing. I think we're only playing a couple in the main deck, you know. Um, as far as Ojutai goes, maybe the best dragon in the format. I mean, a hexproof dude unless he swings in, but when he does swing in, he gives you card advantage in the form of an anticipate type effect, and that's super great in a deck that's just packed with threats and removal, you know. A Jutai, I want to I want to see him as much as possible in game, so I'm going to play two copies of him, because I really want to draw him throughout the course of the game. Um, and we're a mid-range sort of deck, you know, we're going to go a little bit longer, much more easy to see a Jutai if we play two copies. Let's do that. Um, but a Jutai, just, again, one of the strongest cards in the entire format, a freaking house five power flyer that can give us card advantage and is hexproof when we want him to be, so yeah. Couple of dragons to round it out here. We're playing one copy of Kolagon the Storm's Fury and one copy of Silumgar the Drifting Death. Now, instead of the Kolagon, you could play Dragon Lord Silumgar. I would I could understand that if you want to steal creatures, that's fine. That's a really, really good card. But I really like um the fact that Kolagon when he swings in, he gets all your dudes buffs for each dragon that swings in. So if you're swinging in with a couple of dragons, both dragons get bigger, all your other dudes get bigger if you're swinging in with other guys, you know. Um, but just swinging in with a couple of dragons is huge with a Kolagon. And the same thing with the Silumgar, uh, the Drifting Death. He's He's really good when you swing with a couple of dragons. Able to, you're able to kill all their small guys, um, even maybe just with the one Silum Guard, you can wreck combat, just swinging in with one Drifting Death and like no other dragons. So both these guys are really important. As far as Kolagon goes, I just personally prefer him. But if you wanted to play D Lord Silum Guard, I'd be down for that too. You know, whatever you want to do. Those were our eight dragons. We're playing 14 creatures, so what are the other six? Well, we're playing four Jace in the deck. Sorry, anybody hates Jace, but you gotta play him. We're playing like 19 targets or so that he can hit. We're playing a lot of stuff that he can recast. And in the early game, we're trying to get to the mid game if we possibly can. In the early game, his sort of Hydro Lash ability, is his uh, first ability, is really good. Um, and, you know, this is ultimate, whatever, but you wanna recast spells with Jace. And in the early game, he also helps us draw cards and loot and stuff like that. So I like everything about Jace. Really don't see a reason not to play him, you know, he plays in Jeskai Black or Jess or Dark Jeskai, whatever you call it. So I'm gonna play him in this deck too, because we've got a lot of viable targets that he can recast. And to round it out, two copies of Tassiger right here. I mean, you kind of expect that. I don't know if anybody called Tassiger while they were watching the video, like, what are the other two creatures? But um, yeah, Tassiger. Another thing that helps us get stuff out of the graveyard, you know, he's really resilient, that's pretty awesome, and he's a huge body for sometimes one mana, so that's pretty freaking cool too, play a lot of fetch lands, and a lot of instants and sorceries that'll go to the graveyard, so Tasker's really easy to cast, and is awesome when you play him. I mean, I really don't know what else to say about Tasker other than he's one of the best cards in the entire format, whether you're playing him as a cheap creature with an amazing body, you know, or you're playing him to recur cards out of your graveyard, or you're just doing both. Now let's check out the spells here, we're playing 19 of them, that's a lot of spells, but you know, Grixis, we got a lot of the best spells in the entire format, and we're playing some white so we get Crackling Doom, right? We'll get to that. 
Um, to start off, let's play some Burn. Um, four copies of Draconic Roar. We got the dragons for it. And then one copy of Fiery Impulse. Just to have the one copy. It's really nice. Even as a top deck later on in the game, you can often kill, you know, more creatures, mana riders, and stuff like that. So, um, really good top deck. And really good early on in the game, too. But we're not really looking to play too many spells on our first turn. We got a lot of stuff. Comes to play tapped, you know, so. Not really a priority that we play, like, four Fiery Impulse. But I do like to have it as an option. We're playing two Ruinous Path, going through the removal here. Because we got, like, a million removal options. I think it's something like 50. 15 total removal, removal options? That's a lot. Um, so let's play two Ruinous Path. Allows us to take out Planeswalkers and allows us to make creatures later in the game. That can be relevant. Um, but mostly, we're going to be blowing away dudes. Three copies of Crackling Doom. I told you we'd get to it. It's one of the best spells in the standards right now. Um, this is one of the whole reasons that Jeskai Black exists. Like this and Tassiker and, you know, a couple of things. But mostly this and Tassiker are the reasons that Jeskai Black even exists as a deck right now. Crackling Doom is that good, taking out the biggest threat on their side of the table and dealing two damage just for, like, no reason. <laughs> just, they need to cram something onto the card here at two damage. Stuff like that really adds up, actually. So, I mean, just over the course of the game, do like two or four damage to the Crackling Doom. That's, all. That's like hitting with a Thunderbird region. That's pretty freaking sweet. Um, but mostly, amazing removal that takes out huge stuff. Even things with Hexproof, like other road Jew ties, which can sometimes be an issue. But mostly, just going to get rid of the fattest, juiciest thing on their side of the board, which is pretty awesome for us. Two copies of Radiant Flames in the main deck here. Radiant Flames is a super awesome sweeper. Um, the only thing we have to worry about is sweeping our own Jace, but if he's already drawn a couple of cards for us, it's totally fine. Whatever, we'll draw more Jaces. That's why we're playing four of them, right? Radiant Flames is great against aggro and, you know, smaller time decks that play like morph creatures and stuff. Um, just really amazing on the third or fourth turn against those things. Uh, I like it actually more than Languish in this format, and yeah, we'll only ever hit for the three. But since we're playing four colors, it helps us hit three colors a lot easier, you know? Um, so Radiant Flames, definitely great option, and really helps us get into the mid-game against a lot of decks, not just pure aggro. One copy of Foul Tongue Invocation in the deck, just call it FTI, that's what we do. Um, I at least want to play the one copy, I know some people want to play four, or some people want to play zero, but I do like the one copy against heavy aggro decks, and again, against decks that have hexproof creatures and stuff. I think it's a decent option at least. There's other stuff, I'm not playing main deck Kolagon's Command, which some people might cry foul on, so there are two in the sideboard against more control -y decks and decks that remove a lot of our creatures, you know. But we can mostly out-threat a lot of stuff in the format, so we're not that worried about it, even if, you know, Kolagon's Defense Command is good resiliency, don't get me wrong. And we can make control of discard cards. So it's good, good against control, but didn't include it main deck. You could put a one of instead of FTI, but I just really love FTI, whether it's gaining you life or not. Like, it's definitely going to remove you a creature. One copy of Murderous Cut, just to have a Murderous Cut. I mean, like I said, we're playing a lot of fetch lands and a bunch of spells and stuff, so at least one Murderous Cut, if not like two. One copy of Crux of Fate in the deck, and I can see playing two, or maybe even a Languish, you know, but I just really love the sort of synergy provided with Crux of Fate, you know, just blow away all their guys and then fly through with some dragons, that's pretty awesome. Um, but Crux of Fate, this is a pseudo-control, but not really deck, you know, we're not playing any main deck counter spells or anything. So, we need a sweeper, it's really nice to have sweepers, more so than just Radiant Flames, and this one plays to our advantage, so I'm at least playing the one copy. And to finish off the spells here, the main deck, really, three copies of Dig Through Time and one copy of Painful Truth. Just wanted to go through the sort of advantage engines uh, last here. Dig Through Time is an established card. A lot of these are established cards, and I haven't had to say as much as I have about them. But Dig Through Time... Yes, let's play that. And Painful Truce is a card that's really coming into its own. Even people are talking about this in Modern. Like, a lot of people overlooked this when it first came out. Tony, I'll give it to him. Tony said this card might be good. And I was like, oh, maybe. Card is fine, it turns out. Even Blue Scott Vargas thinks so. So I'm at least going to play the one copy. Drawing three cards for three mana. That's a good deal, even if we're playing three life here. Three cards is a lot of cards. Here's the lands. We're playing 27 of them. I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. Eurixus, you know, we, we know what we're doing. Even adding that fourth color. I mean, we're sort of playing the Jeskai mana base, but not really. We have a couple of things we have to futz with here, but for the most part, it's pretty easy to build. We got our fetch lands for it, we got our um, our battle lands for it, or tango lands, whatever. If you're still calling them that, I think it's an awesome name, but still, I mean, like I said, pretty easy, I think, to build this mana base. Here's our sideboard here. A lot of one ofs in the sideboard, because um, we're just looking to sort of really fine tune the main deck and do supplementary copies of different things, you know. That a Jutai's command could be in the main deck, and I've already said Kolagon's command could be in the main deck, too. So it depends on what you want to do, and I could see playing Silimgar Scorn 
into the main deck if that's what you wanted to do too. There's a lot of ways, as I've mentioned, to build this Grixis Dragons deck. But in this one, just on the note of Sylengar Scorn here, we're playing Jace on the second turn a lot of the time, sometimes the third turn, you know, depending on tap land situations. So we, we really don't, and we don't want to have to make two blue by the second turn every game, you know. So I, I cut Sylengar Scorn from the main deck. You could put it in your side or main if you wanted to. These are our power rankings right here. We're pretty good in a lot of categories, and our final score is 69. Anybody that follows the channel knows that's a pretty high score, and we achieve it by just playing a lot of really good threats and all the best removal in the format. So, I mean, it's really no surprise, honestly. We're sort of taking Jeskai Black's philosophy of just adding a color and a lot of, you know, we're playing the same four colors, really, and just playing a lot of the best spells in the entire format. We just got a slightly different strategy here. We can play a burn spell in Draconic Ward. That's pretty cool. We can play Foul Tongue Invocation, but mostly we can play huge threats in the form of dragons, and that helps us out a lot. Um, I'm not saying this is the best this four color combination deck in the format. I think Jeskai Black is slightly better for different reasons, you know. But in this deck, we have a lot more solid threats. That's pretty cool. And we do a lot of things differently than that deck. The only real bad news about this deck is the price tag. On TCG Player, it'll cost you anywhere between $450 and about $800 to build this freaking thing. Mostly because of the Jaces and the mana base. Um, that's, those can be an issue. But we're going to lose fetch lands um, with Shadows over Innistrad. I want to stress that point. A lot of people have been asking in the comments, like, doesn't cons and fate rotate when um, Oath of the Gatewatch comes out? No, it rotates some. Um, the beginning of every new block is when you'll get a rotation. So, um, this is the second set in the uh, Zendikar block. So, a set will not rotate out. A set doesn't rotate out in the middle of a block, always at the beginning of a block. So, when Shadows of Innistrad comes out, that's when we'll get a cons and fate rotation. Um, dragons and Magic Origins stay in until the next rotation. So, just remember that. Um, but in any case, for now, this deck will cost you a pretty penny, and it probably won't change that much um, when the format switches. Although, we probably won't see as many four-color decks. But that's, that's, a, that's a conversation for another time. Well, that's all I got for now. Shuffle this one up. I think it's actually a really, really powerful deck that plays a lot of the better cards in the, in the format. So, I mean, we've got Jace, we've got Crackling Doom, we've got uh, Jutai's and other big dragons and stuff. You know, we got really good removals. So, I mean, the only, like, super threat we're not playing is, is Gideon, really. So, really, really like the deck. I think it's got a lot of awesome stuff going for it. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and if you enjoyed the content, Hit the like button, the thumbs up down there helps us out a lot. Just click our name, Strictly Better MTG, that'll take you to our channel. We've got a lot of stuff, like I mentioned earlier, spoilers, raps about magic decks, that's pretty cool. Whole lists about budget options and stuff, and awesome budget decks. So check out the channel, sub if you're new, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching, my wizards.